so until now we have seen three chapters for introduction to nlp with hugging face chapter number 1 2 and 9 let's continue the thread with chapter number 3 now it's my custom order so what's chapter 3 where we fine tune a pre trained model let's first uh, unpack meaning in this and some logic which is important through this so pre trained models what are those big companies like google facebook amazon the open source models they released they are pre trained model whatever their quality we can improve on them for a specific product we, uh, we are building that's fine tuning so fine tuning is a way to improve upon existing solutions and fine tuning makes the most impact at improving quality of a specific any problem we are trying to solve so this is the most important contributor that's why fine tuning pre trained models is such a important topic okay so here it's divided into uh, these sections where we start by processing the data and once we have gotten the data into the format we need for the model then we do the fine tuning part uh, and then that's the final uh, training of the model okay so in this video we will see the processing data which sets up our model for a uh, uh, you know which gets everything ready so that we can start the model uh, fine tuning okay so you can find the code here on my github repository uh, ajinkya kole 112 hugging face nlp course inside that this is introduction to hugging face chapter 3 fine tuning a pre trained model okay so here let me go into the code this is a standard pipeline of four five steps we all know by now uh, we have to take words sentences each word needs to be mapped to its unique numerical id then that numeric in, uh, id needs to be mapped to meaning of that word and after we have meaning of that word which is called embedding vector then we do further processing so you know list of sentences we send to the model and all of these steps you already know this is a very standard code okay so we start with that and we uh, here uh, start processing a data for nlp okay so uh, data sets is a hugging face data sets library i'm importing it as a hugging face underscore data sets this according to me allows us for a easy to read and understand code transformers i am also importing as hugging face transformers so that way inside code i will say hugging face transformers dot and whatever i know is present in it so auto tokenizer auto model you know stuff like this similarly data sets has this load data set function so makes it easier to write you know uh, instead of uh, it makes it feel oh everything is coming from this library oh all of those functions are coming from that library easier to understand so first thing is uh, we should know the kind of data sets we have uh, in general nlp uh, as a domain okay so uh think for a bit any text we read that is what we want our machine learning model to process and understand now what we as humans do when we read something a lot of these things are very complex you know what we as humans do is so complex that we can't even quantify this is this is the truth of it but for a model we have made it extremely simple currently for entire you know natural language processing we have simply categorized them into three kind of categories one category does you know whether it's sentiment positive or negative so you give a sentence single sentence it says positive or negative that's it then there is another one which is sentence whether are they same or not similar or not uh, sentence similarity so this allows you to understand you know if if the interpretation so active voice to passive voice may be a different way of paraphrasing these things uh, we have here and then there is another you know uh, logic related uh, information so for example if two sentences are given is a related to b or not is b derived from a or not are they contradicting or not so thing like this so for a deep learning model 
these are the few important tasks which are chosen. So whether sentence is positive or negative, or whether they are same or similar or not, or uh, some natural language things. So each of them have their own short form which is used. Deep learning has this extremely complex terms they use always, and it, it makes it really difficult to understand the logic behind it. So we shouldn't be reading from here. Read from this three different kinds of uh, natural language understanding things. Now there are things like COLA, MRPC, QQP, <laughs> MNLE. <laughs> So these words just make it sound, I don't know what the hell nuclear codes they're talking about. It's, it's you know, you, in time you will get easily used to what do they actually mean. They are nothing but our sentence uh, understanding tasks which we are going to use. So what do we do here? We have glue as a data sets. This is a general benchmark. So all of these three categories, it comes under glue. There are other data sets like this, if you search on BARD, uh, it's a very interesting way to study, you know, what are some essential NLP benchmarks. You will find there are many, but the most important one and most uh, easy to get started with is GLUE. So this GLUE, again, complicated terms, but this GLUE stands for General Language Understanding Evaluation. Now, when we expand it, it's so easy to understand. It's, it's, it's just, we are trying to quantify a few basic ways of understanding language. Okay, simple. And in this glue, there are three categories, whether it is single sentence, positive or negative, and um, two sentences, whether they are logically related or not, or whether they are same or not. So, three kinds of categories and different kinds of tasks we have here. So, as long as we know the concept, then it's very easy to understand, okay, what comes where. So, glue and MRPC comes under two se sentences, whether they are similar or not. Okay. How big is this data set? Let me check in the slides. MRPC, 3000 examples. QQP seems to have 300,000. Uh, so, this is a much bigger data set. QQP, I think it's Quora <laughs> duplicate questions or not. Uh, you know, we have so many same questions on Quora, right? So, uh, that data set. You just do this, download Hugging Face data sets, load data set, and you download the data. Okay. Then you check, print what it is doing. You will find, you know, whatever the data set you have, it is divided into a few categories. So I can see in the output, it has train, validation, and test. So I simply created three different variables, each for train, validation, and test. And I can check what is there in training. I want to see a single example in training. How does it look? See here, I can see two sentences. Amrozi accused his brother, whom he called the witness, of deliberately distorting his evidence. Ooh, his brother has fucked him over. And I think he's trying to hide the evidence. Sentence two, referring to him only as the witness, Amzori accused his brother of deliberately distorting his evidence. See, same sentences. We can easily understand it, but if a model can also understand if they're similar or not, that's a, a model which can understand language. We can fine tune it and make it do some interesting things which might be financially successful products. So we are learning to do that. So we do this. Train is what where I have training data. So I can check multiple examples. You know, I want to see not just single sentence, multiple, you know, what do they have? How do they look? Blah, blah, blah. Good way to interact. So this process is how I get the data set. So uh, this is a very standard function. You should get used to using it. Vars of any variable. It allows you to check whatever are internal variables in that complex thing. So you you kind of like get into you, you know, get into habit of understanding things and reverse engineer and understand the logic of how things are working internally. So when you understand how things are working internally, you don't need to remember. You can derive it on time while coding. So that's the first part where we we are converting uh, words into unique IDs into this thing. That's the tokenizer step. All the previous videos we saw. Okay. Taking it further, there is something we saw that different sentences are, you know, we know, right? Different sentences have different number of words. 
the problem in the field of nlp is we convert a word to a, a, a unique numeric id then numeric unique id is taken and mapped to a, a single vector of let's say a certain number of dimensions it's still one to one mapping one word is converted to a one vector so sentence of three words has three vectors of a certain length a sentence of 30 words has 30 vectors now we can't do matrix uh, operations on two different length uh, vectors so we have one with three words one with 30 words so that's why we need to standardize this and that's where why this padding thing is so annoying we then in pre-processing the data we talk about all the ways to make that length same our model which is a linear algebra thing which takes a matrix and multiplies it needs all rows to be of the same length as simple as that so for that we use padding i use a pre-trained tokenizer what what is it i have downloaded it as from hugging face auto tokenizer from pre-trained checkpoint okay so i take that pre-trained tokenizer and then on that i say you know two sentences whether they are same or not i provide that data set uh, and i say padding equal to true so this will make all the sentences of same length so how will a sentence of only three words be same length as 30 whatever is the maximum sentence all sentences become those long those many long things and everything else is a empty word empty word empty word as you can see how stupid that would be uh, every even a three word sentence is converted into maximum number of words in that entire data set that's just dumb man you know so much memory would be taken our model will be so slow so we are improving on that uh in different ways so three different ways of doing padding First, we do like this, simply say directly. Second way is we use this map function. So what we do is the same thing as above. If you check, I have written the code exactly the same way. Tokenizer pre-trained and we specify this same line here. But the only change is instead of doing it for an entire data set in one shot, this is a function which seems to be working on a single example look here it's even though everything is same the change is instead of entire data set this is working with a single example so if it was 10 petabytes of data set this still will, will work because it is doing it one example at a time so somehow it has optimized it for us so, a uh, important functionality for us to understand. Same function, but very different uh, uh, implications. We can run it uh, on any big data set this way. So, we tokenize function this. And here, we say data sets. We call dot map. And then, this function which we wrote above, we specify this. So, when we call this, it takes whatever time it takes. And now using the hardware for parallelization here you see by using hardware for parallelization it has achieved the same thing as above padding but in a accelerated way and memory efficient way this this example this is a memory efficient way also so we understand the logic so i'm like oh makes sense now then there is another way of improving on top of it so this map still takes uh, the data set and uh, you know does the padding according to uh, batch length. So be here we say batch. So whatever is the group size, it, it kind of like takes oh maximum length in that specific group. So whenever we are running, it it will not be it will be a still better than above. But if you want to improve even further. This is the final way. Same function as above. Nothing has changed. We have only removed the padding equal to true now. This we move even later in the process. 
So what we do is this map and everything we remove padding completely from here. And there is a function, hugging face transformers has a function, which is data collator with padding. So this takes the tokenizer as input and this function is passed to PyTorch data loader. So what does PyTorch do? PyTorch allows us to take a, a vector and then you know do deep learning models on top of it. Transformers is a ready-made library where models are hosted, but the code internally is PyTorch code, right? And PyTorch has this data loader and this data collator goes as an input to that PyTorch data loader. So this is a tiny bit different here. Why? Because this is like, you know, whenever we are actually getting a single example, only at that time it uh, standardizes the length of the vectors. So we kind of like delay it so that in the end we can optimize fastest. So this is a lot faster. And when we are running it on a GPU, we can actually speed up the data reading process a lot. So this is how we pre, uh, you know, process the data. And then we fine tune our pre-trained model. Fine tuning is where the most important change is. So in the next video, we will see that.